Over the past century, many musicians have sought to write about their place in history, to situate themselves in a time period and explore what makes it unique and important. I think one of the bands doing that best right now is Arcade Fire. The band have always written incredibly human stories set against the backdrop of modern life, so it should come as no surprise that they've tackled one of the biggest questions of our time. How does our relationship with technology affect our relationships with each other? The band provides a compelling answer in their 2013 album, Reflector. Let's take a closer look. If we really want to dive into Reflector, a good place to start is Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard. His 1846 work, Two Ages, A Literary Review, was one of frontman Wynne Butler's biggest influences when writing Reflector. Here's one of Butler's favorite quotes from the essay. Our age is essentially one of understanding and reflection without passion. An age which flies into enthusiasm for a moment only to decline back into indolence. This sentiment resonated to Butler, who thought that it applied to our current age, one of reflection devoid of passion, thanks in part to technology. In the opening lines of the album, Butler touches on the two biggest themes to come, technology and romance. The narrators are trapped in the ever-pervasive prison of technology. Falling in love is still a private act, but in the modern age, everything is a projection, a performance. In Kierkegaard's reflective age, falling in love is something to be judged, not celebrated. When we fall in love on a stage, we're putting forth a character for our friends and love interest. We're not being who we truly are. This is where Régine Chassaigne chimes in in French. The digital age has put us in this purgatory, the null space between life and death, night and day without any true connection. The brilliance of this line comes in the dual meaning. You could take it to mean la nuit et l'aurore, but also l'ennui et l'aurore, meaning boredom and horror. Despite all that we have to entertain us, this reflective age has left us in a state of ennui, unable to find passion. The second verse of the song is a straightforward continuation of these themes. Now, the signals we send are detected again. When we move to the chorus and the bridge, Butler puts forth his judgment on technology. We expected technology to change us and save us, to make love and humanity easier but instead it's creating another reflective age, discouraging passion and originality in favor of reflecting the same ideas over and over. The theme of technology stays strong as the album continues, with a simple message on the third track, Flashbulb Eyes. Old superstition has it that photographs steal the spirit of a subject, a concept that becomes all the more terrifying in a world where photography is unavoidable and ubiquitous. But in this world, Butler stands strong. He feels he's honest to his true self, so he can stand up to the reflective flash of technology. 
As we push into track 6, Normal Person, Butler touches on the pressure to conform under the scrutiny of the digital spotlight. Towards the end of the song, the band erupts into stalwart resistance of this reflective judgement. No! The first disc ends on Joan of Arc, a story of someone who became inspired and defied convention only to be brought down and killed by her own people. It stresses the reflective nature of this pattern. When we enter a reflective age, we kill those who dare break free from conformity. The isolation that this causes is brought up in Here Comes the Night 2. The dark cycle of causing pain to each other continues as we struggle to find a way to connect. The real tragedy of the lost connection is found in Awful Sound and It's Never Over, which are a retelling of the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. The Greek tragedy depicted on the album's cover is one of the great love stories of all time. When the musician Orpheus ventures into the underworld to save his dead love Eurydice, he is able to cut a deal with Hades. Orpheus can bring Eurydice out of the underworld under one condition. At no point in their ascent to the surface is he allowed to look back at her. Just a few steps from the surface, Orpheus turns around and loses his love forever. This is a potent story that plays into the metaphor of connection. For Butler, the modern age has us living out this myth. We lead each other blindly in the darkness, and when we turn to try to connect, we may find each other lost forever. So is there a way to break free from this reflective age? Is there a way to connect and find passion once more? The climax of the album, Afterlife, poses this question. Butler's best option is to scream and shout, to break free from conformity with acts of love, passion, and originality. If we want to connect to people, if we want to create as artists, we must scream and shout. If we loudly pursue our hopes and dreams, if we have no fear what others might say and think, then we can break free from this digital prison. We can break the mirror and we can end the reflective age.